a dimin in a diminished capacity is better than 85 to 95% of the other quarterbacks in the league. So when he does start to slip, if he does start to slip, he's only going to slip down to very good. He's not going to be excellent. He's going to be very good, which buys him a lot of time. But very good in the NFL, don't get it, in the championship sense. Ask Big Ben and Eli. They've been very good for a long time. Ask Phillip Rivers. He out there having Groundhog Day every Sunday. Every Sunday, Phillip Rivers is down four with three men, with, with a minute and a half to go with and two timeouts. Every Sunday. Down four with 80 yards to go. It's Groundhog Day every day in Los Angeles now. They, they was in San Diego. And they gonna they taking that act at uh, LA too. So but very good don't get you championships. Excellent gets you championships. You have to play above what you think you can do. And that's how you win championships. I'm sorry. So is this the beginning of the end of New England Patriots? I'm starting to believe so. Because yeah, the Phil uh, the, the Pittsburgh Steelers, they fading fast. They are fading fast. There are other teams in the league. Teams are not gearing up to stop the passing game anymore. They, they're gearing up to, they're doing what the NBA did. We ain't going to learn how to play defense to stop the Golden State Warriors. We only dealing with two of the best shooters in modern history and one of the best scorers in the history of the league, and we're going to try to outscore them, which is ass backward. The Jacksonville Jaguars headed up by the only dude to beat Bill Belichick twice in the, uh, uh, in the Super Bowl. Tom Coughlin has desired his team the same way they did in, in New York. We're going to keep that heat on you, and if we and if we can keep that heat on you, we will beat you. With that being said, the Patriots have, have definitely made a move. Like I said, it was a trigger pull, but it wasn't that. The trigger that was pulled was a trigger called Josh Gordon. As I started off the show talking about addiction and the addict, this is the young man Stephen A. Smith was speaking about. Josh Gordon has had substance abuse problems since he, got, since he left high school. He was kicked out of high school. He was run out of two universities. Now he's in the pros. Physically, he's one of the greatest receivers we've ever seen. Physically, we if he if you extrapolate what he did in 2013 to now, this dude would be Jerry Rice, Randy Moss, T.O. Easily, easily. But the reality of the situation is, due to his substance abuse issues, due to social and geoeconomic problems. He isn't able to love himself enough to deal with those issues and move forward. The question I have is, is this, this could, this is two ways to look at this. Me being conspiracy brother, of course I'm going to conspiracy way. Is this the way of the league to say, we going to shoot you right on up in, uh, 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 the pit to the Patriots and either supreme structure a rigid structure will force you to act right and fly right because it's almost like being in jail. We're going to keep our foot on your neck and then you're going you're gonna to do exactly what we tell you to do and that'll snap him out of it at least until the off season. or we really don't want to give you another chance and it will be a red flag to the rest of the league if Bill Belichick took a chance on you. You will instantly be thrown into the Albert Hainsworth pile and you'll be done away with. Is that those are those are the only two options I see? Because he, he gonna straighten up and fly right, or this is your this is the league saying even though if he gets popped for the drugs, he'll be suspended for three hundred sixty five days or substance abuse or anything any anything that's deemed illegal by the NFL, he will be run out of the league. Exactly, Kim. Some people do need structure. So so you know. Uh, uh, a a cruel term I think it's cruel, it may not be cruel to others a term uh, uh, exactly, I know what you meant to fight addiction some people will call it, some people even call it institutionalized Kim because you get people, they are in the penitentiary and they got a, a CEO on, his, on your ass all the time, not letting you go left and right, you just go in a straight line straight line, no lateral thinking, no lateral movement and you are a model citizen in, in the penal system but once that structure is removed, you start going wild again. This could be exactly what Josh Gordon needs, and we will be wildly entertained because we've never seen consistently Tom Brady with this type of uh, weapon on, uh, at his disposal. Him and Gronk on the field at the same time, like Shaq and Kobe. Or 
he'll be running out of the league and nobody will ever take a chance on him again because, hey, Belichick took a chance on him and we ain't going to do it anymore. So, I really, I don't, I don't, I don't know what, what's next for the brother Josh. I just wish the best for him, man, because he seems pretty cool. Uh, I've seen him in interviews. Uh, I, I think, you know, you know, he, he, he does exercise one of my pet peeves when he tells people his personal business. I understand full disclosure is part of uh, fixing that, uh, working through addiction and things of that nature. I get it, but. You can be honest with your inner circle. You can be honest with your family. He won't change till he wants to. If he finds he wants, yeah, yes, it is. It is your choice. It is definitely your. The choice is yours. Like black, uh, uh, black sheep. The choice is yours. But I definitely want the best for that brother, which leads me to another situation. The New York Football Giants are in turmoil. The New York Football Giants are going to be scrutinized to no, to no end. They picked Saquon Barkley over Sam Darnold. The only reason the number one story in America today wasn't the Giants are the stupidest team in all of football is the fact that Sam Darnold looked like a rookie this week. If Sam Darnold would have came out and lit it up again like he did against Detroit, against the Miami Dolphins, we would be having a totally different conversation. The people in New York would be getting killed, but then again, maybe not because of uh, my man Reese ain't up there no more. We all know how that goes. Now, where I'm looking at this is this. The New York Giants have one problem, one problem more. One of my favorite quarterbacks in the league. Y'all going to be shocked. Eli Manning, one of my favorite guys. I've been an Eli Manning fan since Ole Miss. Don't ask me. I don't. I can't explain it. I watched the dude play as a uh, freshman, and I've been on his team ever since. That's why. That's the only reason I have. I'm a loyal cat. That's, what, that's how I get out. That's just who I am. But Eli Manning at this point is washed. It's a wrap for Eli. And see, if we remove the racism and things of that nature from football, the New York Giants would be in this situation. You know why? Because they would hire a guy by the name of Colin Kaepernick. And then he'll be cool. The Giants will be cool because then it'll just be, you know what that'll be just like? When Drew Bledsoe was washed in Dallas. And they said, put in Tony Romo because he's mobile and he can, he can move around. You to bring in Colin Kaepernick with the New York Giants and voila, boom, battle your pockets are getting fat. But they're not doing that. What I'm looking at the New York Giants is they are, are pitiful at this point. Uh, I, I'm not a giant fan, but me growing up in the era when LT ruled the roost, you are everybody, I believe most people from my generation are low key. And they, you probably got like two or three percent giant fan in your blood. Simply because Joe uh, LT LT was something that we had never seen before. He dominated the team like no other. So that's how I became a, a closet giant fan, an almost giant fan. But I support them. But it's over for them, man. Anytime you are losing to the hapless Dallas Cowboys, now that I am a, a Dallas Cowboy hater, I don't hate the players. I just hate the team. You can put the uniform on a monkey. I'm gonna hate the monkey. But they lost it to the Dallas Cowboys 13-12. The Dallas Cowboys were ranked today 26 out of 32 teams in the league. Anytime you can only muster, uh, uh, everybody looked at the Dallas Cowboys. They saw that one pass that Dak said, and they saw the Cowboys back. Dak Prescott didn't even have 200 yards passing, y'all. Under 200 yards passing, and I know it's a bunch of people out there that are going, well, Troy Aikman didn't either, but Troy Aikman was hitting. He was putting Jake Novacek in the uh, – Pro Bowl. He was with Michael Irvin uh, and Alvin Hopper in the Pro Bowl. So, even though he wasn't lighting the scoreboard up, he was doing what I call timely. He was connecting on timely passing. A another thing to support my point that this is not a passing lead. It is a completion lead. Because you can throw the ball all you like. Dita Brock, Trent Dilfer, anybody who's worn the Bear jersey since Jim McMahon consistently you can throw the ball all you like. If you're not completing those passes or you're not hitting those dudes, throwing them open, it don't make a difference how much you throw the ball. If you think it's a passing lead, I need you to go outside your house. Look to the, if you're in Chicago, look to the northwest, northeast, and say, hi, Detroit, because Matthew Stafford is throwing that ball all over everything, setting all kinds of records, looking like a mini Drew Brees, and no.
he looked like a poor man Drew Brees, but he's just looking like a poor man because he ain't winning no playoff games, he ain't winning no divisions, he ain't doing nothing but getting paid. So, back to Eli Manning and the New York Giants. The New York Giants need to get their act together. That offensive line can't block sun out their eyes. Saquon Barkley, a year is being wasted of his career. Shepard, Odell Beckham, and everybody. Look, look, here's the funny thing. Where's all of Odell Beckham criticism at? Where's the general manager criticism? Because last year when my man Reese was up there, y'all was killing him. And they got the exact same problems. They signed a dude from the Patriots. The Patriots line been shaky for about six years. So, while well, everybody was killing my man Reese last year, it looks like the Giants had the same problem. The only thing is, you now you wasting great talent and good y'all throwing good money out the bag. With that being said, let's move on to another game, which was kind of intriguing to me as well. The Philadelphia Eagles and the Tampa Bay, we used to call them back in the day, the Yuccaneers, because they were terrible. And we anticipated them being terrible with Fitz, uh, Fitz at the helm, and you got Nick Foles at the helm on the Philadelphia Eagles. It looks like the Philadelphia Eagles' walls within the next two weeks will be resolved, simply because... Folks is out of there. He's out of there. God, uh, Lord willing, that he uh, 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 Wentz don't get hurt again. The Philadelphia Eagles should be back in stride. This is, I'm going to touch on this a little later as I speak about football as a game, as an institution. I'm looking at these situations. But the Philadelphia Eagles lose to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Ryan Fitzpatrick is heating the league up. I think he has like 800 yards passing and eight touchdowns in two games. They got memes about Ryan and everything. But we all know if you've watched more than two years in the NFL, you know Ryan Fitzpatrick gets real hot when the expectations are ratcheted up. His ass goes cold as ice. And that's what we can expect from him. Now, the big talk is, do you bench him while he's red hot? For Jameis Winston. I don't know. I'm going to ride it out. Because see the thing is. Sports is all about momentum. And this is a classic case of what I'm talking about. This is not a passing lead. Ryan Fitzpatrick is heating up right now. First and foremost. Y'all heard my perspective in regards to. Why you see so many points being scored. And why games are out of control. Due to the lack of physicality in practice. We won't get real football until week five. Then people will have adjusted, and at that point, that's when Ryan Fitzpatrick will fall off. As they say on the west side of Chicago, he's going to fall off like bad dope. And I anticipate that because by that point, you have coaches who have scouted properly, and they see what he's doing, and they will make amends to, you know, they will make changes to, to neutralize his inability to be consistent. They're going to make him play left-handed, so to speak. And what I mean by making him play left-handed is this. Whatever he does not do well, they will force him to do that, and then it's over. See, I, this was, this leads me into my uh, uh, point for the week. When are we going to stop telling the lie that the NFL is a passing league? I brought up those teams because the reason those teams are struggling is because Lack of offensive line. And what happens with lack of offensive line? That means the quarterback is being teed off on. Do you know how to slow down of your quarterback getting teed off on? You run the football. Because when you got that pass rush just peeling their ears back, running straight at the quarterback, it's a race to the quarterback. Those dogs hunting, as they say, the only way you can slow that down is with a running game. Look. The reason a lot of these teams, a lot of these young quarterbacks look piss poor is because nobody's running the football. You have to have balance. There's no way in hell the other, other quarterbacks around the league should be throwing 45, 55 times. Do you know Joe Flacco threw the ball 55 times? Jameis Winston, 45 times. Uh, uh, Kirk Cousins, 45 times. Um... That's insane. Uh, uh, Sam Donald, a rookie. He loses the game by eight points. A rookie by the name of Sam Donald threw the ball 41 times. Ben Roethlisberger, 
one of the most overrated players. Oh man, Trey gonna cuss me out. But one of the most overrated players in.